Question 5.2, page 242, Solving Systems of Linear Equations by Substitution. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve a system of linear equations by a method called substitution. And then you will learn how to solve um, real life problems using systems and then this technique called substitution. So another way to solve a system of linear equations is to use substitution. In the last lesson, you learned how to solve by graphing. Now, graphing has good points and bad points. Here's the good point. You can see the picture, and you can see where the lines cross, and it gives you the solution. The bad point is you've got to take out graph paper, and it takes time to graph it. Substitution can be a much quicker method. It's just a paper and pencil method by writing an equation and solving it. Now, in order to substitute, it's a three-step process to solve a system by substitution. The first step, solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So that's the first step. Second step, we want, well, let me add one thing to the first step. What this is saying is make sure one equation is solved for one of the variables. In other words, this first step is saying make sure one variable is on its own on one side of an equation. So that's step one. Step two, substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. Step three, Substitute the value from step two into one of the original equations and solve. Now, when I read this as a teacher, I'm like, wow, this really seems complicated. It's a lot easier for me to show you this on paper than to read it in steps. So I would put these steps in your notes. It's something I could ask on an audit. But I think it's going to be easier to show you the three steps in a sample problem. So let's do a question together, and as we do it, I'm going to outline each of the three steps I'm doing. Okay, so I want to solve this system by substitution. So here's the first thing. I want to make sure one of the equations is solved for one of the variables. So as you can see, I'm looking here, and I'm like, great. One variable is isolated. This is perfect for substitution. You can see that in the first equation. Do you notice how y is on one side of the equation all alone? That's what the first step here is trying to tell you. Look at your two equations. If one variable is isolated, this is a perfect situation to substitute. Step two. Now, I, do you notice how y is the same thing as negative 2x minus 9? That's what equals means. y and negative 2x minus 9 are the same thing. So the second step is telling you I can take negative 2x minus 9 and go to the other equation. Let me highlight the other equation in a different color. I'll highlight it in orange. And I can take negative 2x minus 9, and I can substitute that in for y because y and negative 2x minus 9 are the same thing. So you can see that right here in this step. In that orange equation, instead of writing y, I substituted in negative 2x minus 9 because y and negative 2x minus 9 are the same thing. I can substitute one for the other. Now, if you get to here, you just have to solve. Okay, so what's the first step of solving? This takes us way back to chapter one of the year. You have to simplify first. So I'm going to have to simplify by distributing first. Be careful with your signs. So I get 6x plus 10x plus 45. Okay, have I simplified everything? Nope, because I'm looking here. I have like terms. Let's combine those together. 16x plus 45 equals negative 19. I can take away 45 from each side. That would give me 16x equals negative 64. I can divide by 16, and I just figured out that x equals negative 4. So I know my answer right now is negative 4 for x, but I don't know why. 
That gets me to step three. Now that I know that x is negative 4, I can go back to my original equation and I can plug in a negative 4 for x. Let's do that. y would equal negative 2 times negative 4 minus 9. That means y would equal, that's 8 minus 9, y equals 1. So my answer must be negative 4 comma 1. Okay? Oops, and I just made a mental mistake, didn't I? 8 minus 9 is not 1, negative 1. Now, that could happen to you too, but here's how you catch yourself. Okay? So, negative 1. You always check your answer. Go to the other equation and check it. Plug negative 4 in for x and negative 1 in for y. So let me do that. 6 times negative 4 minus 5 times negative 1 better equal negative 19. Let's try. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And is that true is the question. And yes, it is. Now, remember how I had it screwed up and I had positive 1. If I plugged in negative 4 and positive 1 up here, this is not a true statement. And that's a clue to me that, wait a minute, I've screwed up something in my work. I did. I just made a simple mental mistake. I forgot the negative. 8 minus 9 is negative 1, not positive 1. Okay? So you can always check yourself when using substitution. Let's try one more just to make sure we have the hang of it. So here's a problem. 3x plus 2y equals 0 and y equals half x minus 1. Now the first thing I notice is this is great. I have y all alone on the bottom equation. That's perfect for substitution. So y and half x minus 1 are the same thing. So I can take half x minus 1. Let me color code here with the color. I'll use green. Half x minus 1, I can substitute in up here for y. So I'm doing that. Do you notice how I wrote this equation again? Let me circle it. I wrote this again down here. But I put in half x minus 1 for y. I can substitute those are the same thing. So now I will distribute. And 3x plus, when I distribute, I get 1x minus 2. I can combine like terms. 4x minus 2 equals 0. I can add the 2, divide by the 4. I got x equals a half. So I know my answer would have to be half comma something. Okay, I just got to find the something. That's easy. Let me erase this stuff here. I can take half, I can plug it in right here for x, and I'll quickly find y. So I have y equals half times half minus 1. So this is 1 quarter minus 1, and 1 quarter minus 1 is negative 3 quarters. Now let me quickly check it to make sure I'm right before you try. Let's check it. So I have 3 times half plus 2 times the negative 3 quarters. Let's put that in our calculator real quick and try it. And you can see I typed in 3 times half plus 2 times the negative 3 quarters, and I get 0. So when I check, that's what I'm supposed to be getting. I'm supposed to be, this says 0. I'm supposed to be getting 0. So this is the correct answer. Let's have you try, pause the video, you try number 3. Okay, you're back. So for 3, here's the first thing. You should have noticed this is perfect. I have a variable all by itself, x. So I can substitute 6y minus 7 in for x in the other equation. So let's do that. I highlighted that in pink. I'm going to put 6y minus 7 in for x. So I wrote it here, where you can see I'm circling right now. Okay, let's simplify and solve. Distribute. Combine the like terms, and now you got a simple two-step problem to solve. Add 28, divide by 25, y equals 1. So I know my answer is something comma 1. Y is a 1. It's easy to find x now. Take 1, plug it in here. 6 times 1 minus 7 is what I'm looking for. That's 6 minus 7. That would be negative 1. So that should be my answer. Let me quickly check. 
if I put negative 1 in for x here and 1 in for y here, do I get negative 3? And yes, I do. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so this is the correct answer. Okay, now, when you substitute, it doesn't always set up perfect. Like you look here, this is not perfect. I do not have a variable isolated. I can fix that really quick. It's an easy fix. Now, to fix it, always try to isolate a variable with a coefficient or of 1 or negative 1. Remember, coefficient means number in front of variable. So as I look at this problem, let me write on here. I have negative 1 here, I have positive 1 here, and I have positive 1 here. So the positives are easier. I would want to isolate this variable or that one. It's your choice. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate y in the top equation. So all I have to do is add 1x to each side, and I get y equals x plus 3. So now I, I do have a variable isolated. So let me color code again. So if y is the same thing as x plus 3, I can take x plus 3 and go to the second equation and replace y with x plus 3, and you can see they're doing that right here in pink. They took x plus 3 and they substituted that in for y in the second equation. Okay, now I just have to simplify and solve. 3x plus 1x is 4x, plus the 3 is negative 1. Take away the 3, I get 4x equals negative 4. Divide by 4, I get x equals negative 1. So I know my answer is negative 1 comma something. To get to something, take negative 1 and plug it in here. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. There's the answer. Let's quickly check it in the other equation now. So I had negative x plus y equals 3. If I plug this here and this here, do I actually get 3? Well, negative or opposite negative 1 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. It checks out. That has to be the correct answer. Let's have you try number 5. Now, you notice in number 5, this is not perfect. I need you to isolate a variable and think about it. You want to try to isolate the variable that has a 1 in front. That would be your easiest work. So that's my hint. Go ahead, try number 5. So here's what I was hoping you would do. Here's the problem. I was hoping that you would notice that if we isolate y in equation 1, you notice how there's a positive 1 in front, this will be your easiest work. So. I rewrote negative x plus y equals negative 4 just down here so I could add x to each side. y equals x minus 4. So there's my easy fix. I just isolated y. Take x minus 4 and go to the first equation and replace y with x minus 4. Now be careful with the signs. You have 4x minus x minus 4 now equals 10. Now we have to distribute. Don't forget there's like a negative 1 in front. So I have 4x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative times negative is positive. That's why I have positive 4. 4x minus 1x is 3x. And now I can take away the 4 and divide by the 3, and I get 2. So my answer has to be 2 comma something. I can now take 2, go right here. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Okay, let's check that now with our equations. If I plug a 2 in here and a negative 2 up here, do I get 10? Let's check. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus negative 2, does that equal 10? And yes, it does because we add the opposite. And the same thing if I plug 2 and negative 2 up here, opposite of 2 is negative 2 plus negative 2. That's definitely 4. This is definitely the correct answer. It checks in both equations. We can use substitution now to solve word problems fairly easily. So here's a word problem. A drama club earns $1,040 from a production. A total of 64 adult tickets and 132 student tickets were sold. An adult ticket costs twice as much as a student ticket. 
write a system of linear equations that represents the situation and what's the price of each ticket. So here's the first thing. I'm going to call X the price of the adult tickets and I'll call Y the price of the student ticket. So the first equation they gave us right here in what I highlighted in pink and green. If I do 64X plus 132Y, the total was supposed to be $1,040. Okay, the second equation is the one I'm more worried about because students, and I screwed this up all the time when I was your age too, I think you and I probably the mistake I made, a lot of people make. Now, the adult tickets cost twice as much as the student ticket. So let's think about that. Let me draw a little bar graph. Here's an adult ticket. That's X. A student ticket then would be here because didn't it say the adult tickets were twice as much as the student ticket? So there's a bar graph. The adult tickets, the bar should be twice as big. So does it make sense? It would take two sets of student tickets to equal one adult ticket. Can you see my second equation? X equals 2Y. There's my second equation. Well, this is perfect. I have a variable all alone, X. I can take 2Y, I can substitute it in for X, and you can see that happening right here. 64 times 2y plus 132y is 1,040. 64 times 2y would be 128y plus 132y equals 1,040. So when I add these two together, that's where the 260y equals 1,040. That's where it's coming from. Divide by 260. And I found out Y is 4. So I know my answer is something 4. Well, it's easy to get X. Take 4 and plug it in here. X must be 2 times 4. X is 8. So what does 8 4 mean? It means it was $8 for an adult ticket. It was $4 for a student ticket. I'm going to stop the video there. If we have questions, make sure you ask in class.